There have been many inspiring talks about design today, and I also work in design. I am an information designer, which means that I design data visualization to make analysis more accessible. My journey started last year when I returned from my Fulbright program and I took a job as an analyst in a Punjab-wide health survey. And while I was analyzing indicators on health, I was also making data visualization like the one you see on the screen. Uh, to many of you, this might appear as a useless abstract art piece, but I hope to convince you there's more to it. So what you see in this visual is you, you have two sets of blue colored arcs on both the left and the right hand side, and they're interconnected by a network of gray ribbons in between. The arcs that you see to the left correspond to birth attendants. For example, this one corresponds to doctors. And its size tells us that 59% of recent mothers in Punjab had their deliveries assisted by doctors. And similarly, about 20% had their deliveries assisted by traditional birth attendants, and we call them dais in our language. On the other side, the right-hand side, we have arcs for place of delivery, and we can learn that 21% of the mothers had their deliveries in a government hospital, whereas about 22% had them in their own homes. But what if we wanted to take our analysis a step further and wanted to study the relationship between place of delivery and birth attendance? That's where the lovely ribbons in the middle come in. So for example, this one indicates that 18% of the mothers had their deliveries in their homes and were helped by dais or traditional birth attendants. And this one tells us that 3% had their deliveries in a private hospital and were helped by a nurse. So I had access to a wealth of knowledge about reproductive health in Punjab through this uh, piece of modern art that you see. And I remember when I made this, I remember being very, very excited. And I was excitedly running around showing this proudly to my family and friends. And I often wonder why was I so worked up and excited. And it seems to me that I had questions at that time that I cared about. And I just got them answered. And as human beings, we are all curious beings, and we do have questions in our lives that we do care about. And getting them answered is a big deal. That new knowledge can feel very empowering at times. And as we transition into a world where data is getting cheaper by the day, but perhaps knowledge is not, what can we do to make knowledge and insight more accessible? As an information designer, I believe that we can visualize our data more to get to the answers we seek, and I hope to convince you that today as well. About 11,000 people have lost their lives due to bombings in Pakistan since 2000, and over 20,000 have been injured in the process. But can we put these numbers into context? So the visual you see on the screen is a timeline of deaths due to bombings in Pakistan. Each circle that you see represents the number of deaths on a particular day. And when you look at this visual, you can learn that in the early 2000s, bombings in Pakistan were few and far in between. But something drastically changes in mid-2007. We see a surge in frequency of bombings as well as deaths associated with it. But perhaps we can also look at the same data set in a slightly different way. We can condense the 18 years of bombings into one animation that would look like this. Notice the fatalities count on the top left portion of the screen as it changes over time. So this visual resolves into a heat map of sorts, which gives us a sense of terror hotbeds in our country, regions that have suffered the most due to bombings in terms of loss of life. And I think these regions clearly stand out if you take a look. KP, Fata, many areas in mainland Balochistan, and almost every single major city in the country. I think a visual like this does something beyond just answer questions we might have about the data. It 
helps us connect in a common sense of loss and grief we all share. National elections of 2018, a slightly less depressing topic, or perhaps depressing, depending on political leanings, I'll let you decide. So around the elections time, I, I wanted to create an alternative to the hysterical cable news coverage of the results. I wanted to create a system, a presentation of the data that would be less noisy and perhaps a little more interactive and engaging. So I worked with my startup team at Plotry Info Design, and we developed a website. The visual that you see on the screen is from that website, and what you see is a map with an assortment of uh, colored bubbles on top. Each bubble corresponds to a seat in the National Assembly, and is colored according to the winning party, and is also sized according to the winning party's vote margin. So immediately you can get a sense of which party won where in Pakistan, but I wanted to do something more with this visualization. I wanted to enable the user to ask questions and help them to get to, those, uh, to the answers to those questions. So for example, if I'm the user and I'm interested in the seats that were won by PTI, I could filter them out. And then let's say I'm only interested in the ones in KP and Punjab. I would get to these seats. And perhaps then I could ask myself, which of these seats were in competition with PMLN? These are the ones I get. And perhaps I could further ask myself, which of these seats were in very close competition, perhaps where the vote margin was less than 1%. I'd filter down to these three seats. And those of you from Lahore might remember the nail-biting contest between Imran Khan and Khaja Sadrafiq in NA131. So the point being, there are many combinations of questions that you could ask and help answer through this visual. Another very simple question I had was, where in Pakistan do we have the highest voter turnouts? Any guesses? Turns out, these are the four constituencies with the highest voter turnouts in Pakistan. And guess where they are? In District Tharparkar in Sindh, and in District Bhakkar in Punjab. So people from the deserts of Thal and Thar voted in higher proportions than from in any major city in Pakistan. I find that information very fascinating. And in fact, women from Tharparkar voted in even higher proportions than men. How beautiful is that? And I think it is knowledge like this that also might help connect us, and something that's invigorating and inspiring about our country. And this is an alternative way to look at the same data. Uh, so this visual looks at PTI's vote share across districts in Pakistan. Each bubble corresponds to a district, and its size maps to the vote share, the vote percent in the district. So if we were to change the political party, notice the geographical shift. So not so surprisingly for PMLN, we have a shift towards Punjab. And for PPP, not so surprisingly, you see a shift south. But perhaps we could do the same exercise for TLP. And perhaps ask ourselves the question, how might Tariq e Labek Pakistan have broken the vote of any other major political party in Pakistan, which was quite a debate in the media. And an interesting statistic that I stumbled upon while doing this was that in District Karachi, TLP secured about 12% of the popular vote, which is higher than that of MMA, PMLN, as well as PPP. So really interesting, fascinating insights. So data visualization can be incredibly insightful as well as a lot of fun. And the thing I like most about it is that it empowers you to become the analyst. And you don't have to be a statistician or a technically sound person in order to become one. All you need is a good question, some creativity and curiosity to get to the answers you seek. And I hope that I've encouraged you to be more curious about the data sets in your life, ask questions, visualize them, and get to the hidden stories they have to offer. Thank you.